My late husband passed when I was four months pregnant. It's been difficult without him, but my family did so much to support me. I moved in with them a month after. At the funeral, my older brother asked for a minute to talk and asked me if I wanted to go through with my pregnancy. I was shocked when I heard this, but even more shocked when he suggested that I make the right decision, not an emotional decision, and reconsider having my son. He gave many reasons, including that single widowed moms are considered too much baggage for so many men to date. I lost it on him and kicked him out. That was the last time we saw each other. My son is now three weeks old. The whole family met him and were happy to welcome him. My parents asked if I could let my brother meet my son even for a few hours. I refused, but they said I was making a mistake by robbing my son of a future loving relationship with his uncle. They asked that I don't let my emotions dictate a decision that might have a lasting impact, but I said no. My extended family got involved and started pushing, especially after my brother started insisting, saying my husband was his dear friend and what I'm doing right now would make my husband upset if he saw it. Am I being bitter and selfish? Why does brother want to see the baggage now? Not the idiot, OP. Every time he says how much of a dear friend he was, remind him of that talk from his dear friend's funeral. Heck, remind the whole damn family of it. If he keeps pulling this manipulative BS, tell him that if he'd had his way, there would be no nephew to meet, so he can go on pretending he got his way. Then, tell the family the same thing, that the day you were burying your husband, your brother told you that you should bury your baby too. Until your brother sincerely apologizes and makes amends, and to be honest, I don't know that I would ever see my brother the same way again, he doesn't need to be in your son's life. Is anyone else super bothered by the way people keep telling OP not to make emotional decisions? Tell your extended family that the discussion is closed and anyone who brings it up again will not be seeing your son for a long time. If and when you want your son to have a relationship with your brother, you will let him know. I'm assuming your brother also hasn't bothered to apologize but still feels entitled to have a relationship with your son and has no problem emotionally manipulating you to get what he wants. Yeah, no, you're not the idiot here. It seems that the brother's heart was in the right place, but he went about it wrong. Think about it. Assuming it was a planned pregnancy and the death was sudden, checking to see if someone who planned a two-parent household is up for now being a single parent is pretty awesome. That's a major change for someone, and checking on them to see if they're okay and up for being a single parent isn't something I often see in these situations. I fully agree with you. Bad wording, timing, and argumentation. Opie, I don't think this is worth cutting your brother out of your life for good. He made an extremely insensitive comment, but he wasn't trying to be malicious. Sometimes people just remove the feeling from a tremendously emotional time like this and try to solve things logically, without any emotion or feelings, which doesn't work. Are you out of your mind? His reason for her to terminate was about finding a new man. Where the heck is it about her own mental health and financial stability? You would tell someone to forgive a family member that stabbed them if they said, pretty please. Agree. He wasn't worried about her. If he was, he'd have said, single parenting is so hard, especially after a tragedy. Are you feeling okay with it? He didn't say any of that because he wasn't worried about her or the baby. He was worried about her dateability because all his concern reduced to whether she'd be sufficiently attractive to other men. We know this because it's what he said. And while that may be his form of caring, OP has every right to find it misogynistic and gross. Methinks you're giving this dude way too much credit. My female 24 brother, Adam, 30, met a single mom, 32, from Latin origins, Michelle, a year ago, and they recently got engaged. We only met her a few times, but he brought her and her son over for dinner on Sunday. The family and I didn't know much about her, so after dinner, we talked to her about her personal life. She told us that she was only a high school education degree, she said she always wanted to go to college and obtain a degree, but said it was hard to do. I found that a bit of a cliché, especially after she started complaining about the lack of opportunities and resources. I told her I disagreed because colleges give all kinds of options and scholarships and that the real reason she couldn't go to college was that she was a mom and had to raise a kid. She stared at me silently, looking offended, then asked if I was implying that her decision to be a mom ruined her opportunities. I told her only she could answer this question once she looked at her life to see if she's really happy where she is versus where she could have been without the whole struggling mom thing. She got upset and told me that she was happy with her life and her job at the salon and said that she didn't appreciate how judgmental and condescending I was towards her and her child. Adam heard the commotion and asked what was going on. 
She told him and he decided it was time to leave. She couldn't even wait or say goodbye. She took her son and went to wait in the car. Adam chewed me out, saying it was none of my business how she's living her life, but I explained that I was stating an opinion. Nothing more, nothing less. Mom sided with them, saying I was out of line, rude and ridiculous, but my younger sister said that Michelle was being too sensitive and she should get over herself already. Adam left and then Mom called him in the evening the next day, then came into my room to yell at me, saying I made Michelle cry with what I said. Now, Mom wants me to apologize, but I'm not sure whether I was out of line here. It's quite clear you look down on her for being a single mom. You think that having a child destroys someone's life and opportunities and, at the same time, assume she uses that as an excuse for not bothering herself with a college degree. You insulted her, her child and her way of life. Did you really expect her to say goodbye and be all hugs? You are the idiot and you're mean. You said it perfectly. Opie is 24, but the way she talks sounds like an entitled teen. But hey, who am I to judge? Maybe Opie's mom also feels like Opie ruined her life opportunities. Opie, seems like your college degree didn't help you at all with basic human interactions. Imagine wasting all that time and money on getting an education and still behaving like a complete ding-dong. Come on, paying for college yourself, even without a family to support, is nowhere near as easy as you and your privileged little self-righteous lecturer are making it out to be. How many people need to tell you you're being an idiot before you'll admit you're being an idiot? To put it bluntly, you basically said, well, you got knocked up so it's your fault you couldn't go to college. It's a rude and ignorant thing to say and can be very hurtful to her and her son. What would it have looked like if you'd encouraged her to find a way to go to college? It's not too late. Much better than the ill-considered judgmental rudeness you served on a platter. Is it possible that your real issue is with Michelle being Latina? You mentioned this irrelevant information early in your story. Gee, she deserves an apology without a doubt. My boyfriend and his friends like to play video games together. I have little to no interest in video games. The issue is that for some reason, he and his friends think that them playing video games is the most interesting thing in the world. And you know how guys who are into sports will have their girlfriends come to watch their games? Of course, he and his friends expect us, the women, to do the same. I'll admit that we tried it once. It was boring and a massive waste of time. None of us were interested in just sitting there watching them play games. But for some reason, the guys like expected that somehow this counted as a group hangout and thought it was a great time. They started to make plans to do it again and I stepped in and said, Hey guys, you can play, but we aren't going to sit around watching you play video games. They didn't get why we didn't like it because they liked sitting around, watching people play games and always watch streamers play. I said if we're going to hang out as a group, we all need to be like doing stuff together, interacting. They argued back that we could always join them in playing the games and I just said that I know I have no interest in that and a few of the other women chimed in to say so. Well, the guys are angry at me now because to them I ruined game night, which to them was something that everyone could enjoy. I don't get why they can't just play games together without dragging bored girlfriends along for the ride. My instinct is that some of them were using it to pretend they were spending time with their girlfriends so they don't get pegged as being crappy boyfriends. Not the idiot, you nailed it. The guys are thinking that if everyone is in the same room, it's a group activity and thus spending time together. It's not. It's them selfishly gaming while their partners stare at a screen. Get better boyfriends. I wonder if the women are expected to give them snacks and drinks and tidy up while the guys play their games. My ex used to do this. I have no idea why I put up with it. I guess my standards were just lower back then. Looking back, I'm amazed by how much time I spent bored out of my skull while he was blissfully uncaring because he was doing something fun for him, and that was all that mattered. Of course, that attitude was reflected in other aspects of our relationship as well. Your free time is valuable and you can decide how to spend it. This story is dripping with misogyny, which I'm having a hard time ignoring, but still not the idiot. I'm a woman who plays video games and I still have never understood why anyone would want to watch someone else play games. Twitch is the weirdest concept to me. No one has any reason to be upset with you. You must be right about the other boyfriends thinking they were getting credit for socializing. No one stops them from playing games. You just don't want to be a forced captive audience. None of the women liked it. End of story. My sister-in-law, nearly adult female, is pretty hard to deal with. She had hang-ups with her brother, marrying a brown Arab woman like me, 27. 
she also insults my cooking, doesn't like anything I make, and claims that it's all terrible from a terrible cuisine. That's why we don't invite her often. Anyway, my husband invited all his family tonight, and I thought of pulling a prank on her. So I cooked her one of our popular dishes, and we lied about it being an East European dish. She loved it. She was all, see, you all see how better the European cuisine is. You all see how it tastes better. You should make more of this and less of that garbage you make in your country. Then, 20 minutes later, I told her the truth. First, she thought it was a joke, but then realized that she messed up and snapped at me for lying to her. Not honorable at all. It quickly turned from a joke into some kind of a fight with her. Dad-in-law, husband, and all brothers-in-law all found no issue with it and even loved this prank. Mom-in-law, though, thought it was an idiot move from me to pull on a teenager and agreed with leaving early. Maybe I'm an idiot. I need a third opinion. Not the idiot. You exposed her crappy racist behavior in a completely non-harmful way. She outed herself by behaving the way she did. A mother-in-law using the she's a teenager defense is stupid. She's legally an adult in a year or less. She's not going to change on her 18th birthday magically. She needs to be called out on nonsense like this or she will never change. Maybe explore with your husband because mother-in-law reacted that way rather than Good, she shouldn't have been saying that hateful stuff, so I'm glad you taught her the lesson that I evidently didn't. But maybe we have now identified the tree that the apple didn't fall far from. Everyone's the idiot here. You embarrassed her by doing this at a family gathering with lots of people. In my experience, embarrassing people is rarely an effective way to teach them a lesson, and that goes double for teenagers. I worry that you may have only succeeded in increasing your sister-in-law's resentment of you. I wish I had a magic bullet solution for your sister-in-law's terrible rudeness. She is the main idiot in this situation. I think embarrassment in the same setting as the criticism is fair. Sister-in-law has criticized the cuisine in front of the family, so Opie and Hubby decreased her visits. Serving her some good food with another label proved that it was the label, not the food. This is not serving an allergen to prove she's making it up or serving only meat dishes when a vegan visits. I think the point was pretty clear. Her parents could have shut her down at any previous point and chose not to, but OP had to take action herself. Some time ago, my middle son, a young child, told me he likes flowers. He then asked me to buy him some. I told my husband, and now my son has a small collection. He treasures it a lot. We also gave my other two kids flowers the first time, but they threw them away immediately or gave them to their brother. Anyway, my sister and her family were over for dinner, and her kids and mine ran off to play. Sometime later, my eldest comes to me saying my middle son is sad. He was. He wasn't crying yet, but he was holding back tears. So I asked him what had happened, and he told me that his cousin had gone to his room and taken his flowers. When I asked him why his cousin would do that, he told me that she just thought they were pretty and wanted them, so she took them. I went to find her so I could get the flowers back and found her with her mom with the flowers around her. I explained to her what happened, and my sister just stared at me in disbelief. They're just flowers, is what she said. I told her that, yeah, they are, but they belong to my son, and he wants them back. I told her that my son would definitely share if she just asked politely. She rolled her eyes and said, but they're just flowers. What's a little boy doing with them anyway? I told her that her saying that was a whole other issue, but I just wanted the flowers back without causing a scene. She told me that she'd give them back after her daughter was done playing with them. So I went to her husband and told him what happened after my niece began bending the stems and he looked embarrassed and immediately told me he was sorry. He went to his daughter, got the flowers and gave them back to my son. He then talked to his daughter who also apologized. I thought that was it, but my sister was fuming the whole time. Before leaving, she began arguing with me, calling me real mature for apparently snitching to her husband. She said I'd given them another reason to fight now and that she hopes I'm happy with my stupid flowers. Am I the idiot? Edit. The flowers are fake, by the way. Not the idiot. If she and her husband fought, it's because he could recognize that she was allowing her daughter to be selfish and inconsiderate, and she was encouraging that bad behavior. Boys are allowed to like flowers, LMAO. I'm glad your brother-in-law apologized and used it as a teaching moment with your niece. Of course, men like flowers. There are tons of gardeners that happen to be men. From personal experience, looking at some beautiful flowers feels extra good after busting your butt in the sun all day, especially when those flowers are the byproduct of your hard work. This, another reason to fight, is telling enough that this most likely isn't the first time Sister Deer is acting entitled 
or teaching her daughter stuff that isn't the best manners. You sound like an excellent parent and went about standing up for your son in a kind and polite manner. Glad he loves his flowers. Everyone's the idiot here. I'm frankly amazed that you had to go to her husband instead of asserting your authority. Hey niece, you took these from son's room without permission. That's bad to do, so give them back now. If your sister protested, you condone theft? Wow, I hope you haven't been stealing from me too. Should I check my bedroom too to find out what you've stolen? Make a scene when a scene is necessary establishment of boundaries.